Good afternoon, everyone. For our Monday Thursday message, we are gathered here at the Lord's table. In the church, today is called Monday or Holy Thursday. The Latin word for command is Monday. So we celebrate today the Passover from Exodus and how Jesus gathered his disciples in the upper room and then he shared with them that Passover meal and he gave us this new command and he gave us communion that we also call the Lord's Supper. So during the middle of the message, I will stop and break the bread and lift up the cup. If you'd like to take communion this evening, you can pause the video and get your elements ready and then take them along with this message. As we approach Easter, as we approach spring, each year I try to vicariously relive the early years of my life by driving around and watching the farmers work in the fields with the windows rolled down or maybe riding the Harley so that you can smell that wonderful fragrance of the earth being opened up getting ready to receive the seeds and begin a new growing season. Growing up on the Hamilton farm, my dad segregated all the duties. There were certain things that he loved to do, and he did them every year regardless. One of those was planting. He did all the planting my entire growing up years. It was my job to work the ground and get it ready for him to arrive now, years later, as an adult, after my dad had surgery and could no longer plant, he asked me to do it. So I was able to learn from him rather quickly because I'd watched him do it for years. However, he did critique how my rows weren't quite straight. He started to get upset, but then he paused and said, well, there's more seed in a crooked row. And he's learned to let it go. So for those last several years that he farmed, he, he allowed me to do that. And you know, it seems like in this world, we all have these duties that we claim as our own. Maybe it's on the farm or in the family. If you're hired to do a job, you're often given a description that lays out exactly what's expected of you. And though that may work in the world, that's not what Jesus tells us to do. He tells us to be a servant of all. And that by serving others, we're actually serving him. In fact, we find this in the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter. It was before the Passover celebration. Before they gathered in the upper room, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. I love that phrase. Not die on the cross, but leave this world and return to his Father. He loved his disciples during his earthly ministry, and now he loved them to the very end. He knew that Judas would soon betray him, but he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel he had around him. Now in those days, people either wore no shoes or sandals, and the roads were dusty. So when you arrived at someone's house, a servant would wash your feet. Jesus took on the role of the servant. And as he washed their feet, Peter said, No, you can't do that. I won't let you wash my feet. Jesus says, you don't understand now, but someday you will. And so Peter allowed Jesus to wash his feet. And then Jesus put his robe back on. He said, you don't understand what I'm doing, but someday you will. He said, you call me teacher and Lord, and that is right. And I have washed your feet, so you ought to wash each other's feet. 
I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done. Do as I have done. Serve others in any capacity that you see a need. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for them. Now we know that when we use our hands and our feet, our time, talent, and treasure to help others, we're actually serving Christ. We are his hands and his feet. And so, Jesus is telling us to be a servant of all. Following this, he comes to the table. A very familiar place as the Christian church disciples of Christ. And following the Passover meal, Jesus then paused. He took a loaf. He lifted it up. He gave thanks. He blessed it and he broke it. He gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. After he'd given thanks, he gave it to the disciples. He said, drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Truly, I tell you, I shall not drink again of this fruit of the vine till I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. A new covenant given to us on covenant or Monday, Thursday. Jesus says this is written in his blood that the old covenant is fulfilled. And through this new covenant, he promises to never leave us nor forsake us, but to be with us always. And this new covenant is that we are to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. We are to love our neighbor as ourself. There within contain the ten. If we live that out every day, we are fulfilling the new covenant that Jesus has given us. Now, following this meal, Jesus and the disciples left the upper room. The other Gospels tell us that they went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus prayed. And he asked God if he could take this cup of suffering away to do it. But Jesus didn't want his will. He wanted the Father's will. A model prayer for us to ask God to pour out our heart to them and then be ready to receive his will and not our own. Now Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. And before he was arrested, Peter said to him that he would never ever deny him. But Jesus, Jesus knew that he would. And ultimately Peter did deny that he knew him three times. Peter, like us, is human. Far, far from perfect. Throughout our life, there have been, may have been times when we have not followed the commands, when we have not loved others or understood all that Jesus was calling us to do. And we can't rewind the hands of time and go back. But we can allow the Holy Spirit to minister to our heart, to lead us into becoming a new person in Jesus, to allow God to transform our lives. And as God transforms our lives, he transforms our thinking. Our thinking transforms our words and our actions, and we learn to know God's will for our lives, which is good and perfect and pleasing. On this Monday, Thursday, I pray that you will pause. Not look ahead to Christ's crucifixion, but pause right here and commune with Jesus. Ask him to open your heart and mind to a greater understanding 
to a greater understanding of his sacrifice, to a greater understanding of the Holy Spirit working in our heart and in our mind. And may we, may we pledge our love to him by putting God first in our life and fulfilling this new command to love our neighbors as ourselves. Christ is always with us. And on this holy week, I pray that your spirit will continue to grow in relationship with Jesus. That this will be a time, a time that the seeds are planted in your heart. A time that Christ transforms your life. Yes, God is with you always. He loves you as you are. He invites you to his table. He invites you into a new covenant with him. And so, I ask, will you receive that new covenant with Jesus? Will you allow him to transform your thinking in your life to become more like him every day?